So today we're talking about retinols and, and how they help the skin. So uh, before we get started, I'm going to do a little brief synopsis on retinols. So retinols improve coarse wrinkling by a couple of ways. Um, what they do, the science of retinols, is they increase collagen synthesis, which increase, induces uh, a protein called c June, and that alters a TGF-beta expression. Uh, the other way they Im Im help us uh, with the anti-aging properties is they inhibit collagen degradation, or the breakdown of collagen. Um, and this works in several ways, including MMP inhibition. What this looks like in a microscope is collagen is actually repaired in the dermal layer. And this increases more normal collagen formation, and uh, this increases the elasticity of tissues, and also increases blood vessel formation. Finally, what happens with retinols is it increases skin smoothness and decreases the roughness of the skin. And this works, um, again, with a different process. And this is all based on scientific evidence. It initiates increased epidermal proliferation. What that means is your skin cells are going to turn over faster. When we're younger, our skin cells turn over about every 14 days. And when we get older, it can happen about every 60 days. And this happens by mostly with binding of the EGF and anti-anthoregulin receptor. So thank you, Dr. Shaw, for the clinical explanation. I'm going to give it to you from my point of view as an esthetician and how I break it down for my patients to understand. So we have retinols here. We have uh, three different grades. We have a 50, um, we have 100, and then we have an 150 uh, retinol. So what this means is that we can treat people who are sensitive and also people who are really used to having retinols on their skin. Retinols can be a little bit intimidating and abrasive to the skin. Um, once you start applying it, you can experience like itchiness, redness on the skin, and most of the time my patients will just stop using it. Um, but you really want to keep using the retinol and for your skin to get used to it. Um, I always recommend at least use it for a month, go through the stages, um, apply a moisturizer along with this retinol and your skin will start to get used to it. Um, so the way I explain a retinol is, a retinol is a BHA molecule, so it is really small and it's able to get down to the basal cell. So in the basal cell we have our juicy collagen, um, we have the collagen down there and the fibroblasts communicate to the collagen which produces more collagen when that retinol is communicating down to the fibroblast, fibroblast communicate to the collagen to um, keep producing more. The interesting thing about collagen is that we start to lose about a teaspoon a year of collagen after the age of 21. So retinols are the gold standard in anti-aging. I recommend it to all my patients, from hyperpigmented patients, um, patients who are coming into Botox, this is what should be in your skincare is a really good retinol. Um, we have medical grade retinols, which are really different from what you find at like CVS. So our retinol here is pure, it's made um, very fresh, it's made to order, and um, like I said, we have three different kinds of retinols, um, which you can't really find anywhere, because most of the time you need to have a prescription for a really good retinol. Here you can come on in, get our uh, 150, and it is good as a prescription strength. So, so a question I have for, for everyone here is, you know, when patients are starting off with retinols, uh, a common thing is that it's difficult to tolerate a retinol in the beginning. Um, do you have any tips or hints for patients, uh, Renee, about uh, ways to tolerate a retinol? Sure. Um, so it is a bit abrasive and um, I do tell my patients to wear it, um, to apply it at night um, on a clean face um, about once or twice a week and depending on that and then they would be able to progress and be able to wear it um, three to four times. Um, a week. And, and that gradual introduction to the retinol has been and been proven in several studies and that's a good way to overcome uh, that original retinol sensitivity. Um, Sarah, any other ways you have patients yeah, uh, so, get used to retinols? Mm -hmm. I always recommend a moisturizer. If you are an oily, you know, acne prone patient, I recommend, um, I'm going to reach over you, sure. this type of product, which is an HA, it's our hydropeptide gel. So this is perfect for acne patients um, to apply to their skin in conjunction with the retinol. Um, and for patients who are normal to dry, I recommend a moisturizer that you can apply. So the way that you would do it is you would wash your face, clean skin, put your retinol in. I would wait about five minutes and then apply your moisturizer or a hydropeptide gel like this for um, oily skin types. So, 
um, the patients will start to get used to it over the course of a month. And that is recommended to use, like, honestly, for the rest of your life is a good retinol. And uh, the other issue a lot of patients have with retinols is uh, sun sensitivity. So mm -hmm. um, any recommendations for patients as far as uh, wearing a retinol, getting used to the retinol, avoiding the retinol reaction? Yeah, well like Reneem said, she said to use it at night, which is a great uh, rule of thumb. Use your retinol at night. Absolutely um, use an SPF um, always. So whenever you're going to be out in the sun, it's just good for maintenance anyway. For anti-aging is using a really good SPF. And um, yeah, you can, there's SPFs at like CVS. What we have here is like a medical grade BB cream. Um, it is your one and done in the morning because it is tinted and it's instant coverage. So the moment that you put this sunscreen on your face, you don't have to wait 30 minutes to go out into the sun. You can go ahead and um, start your day. Yeah, so I guess some summary points here. So if you're getting used to a retinol, the best way to get started is, uh, first of all, start it gradually. Uh, second of all is use it with the moisturizer so you can overcome the redness and flakiness when you're first starting it. And then the third point is to avoid the photosensitivity component is to wear it at night and then um, during the day you should protect yourself from the sun. Um, now there's three different lines of, of retinols that we talked about. Um, what do you recommend patients start with? I would personally recommend patients starting with the lower grade um, which would be the 50. Um, SP, um, retinol. And then, depending on how your skin reacts with that, we would be able to gradually move up with that. So we, so we work your way up from the 50 to the 100 to the 150 strength of, of retinol. So, um, okay. Um, any other tips or points for pa patients wearing retinol. retinols? Um, do you put retinol before moisturizer? Do you put it after moisturizer? Do you put it before growth factor, after growth factor? How about using it with other skincare products? Well, I skincare products like I like to stick to one line because that's just the way I like to do things. So if you're gonna be on a retinol, um, I like to stick to one line. Um, as far as yeah, use it with the moisturizer. Um, also, like for patients who are used to wearing retinol, um, I will start them off right away at our 150. So if you've been wearing a retinol um, for years and you want to switch over, you don't want a prescription for one, you can come in and. Um, use our retinol, which is prescription grade, uh, prescription strength as well. Um, how about you, Renee? Any um, issues with uh, patients? So if someone's on a growth factor, they're on a retinol, they're on a moisturizer, they have uh, three different um, um, products they're on, what's, what's your order? Do you put the retinol first, do you put the growth factor first, do you put the sunscreen, do you put the moisturizer? What's a good way for patients to remember um, the order of products? So I like to kind of, um, my morning regimen and then like um, at my evening so like in the morning I would prefer not to use a retinol um, only because I'm personally I can peel and I'm very sensitive so retinol will kind of start to you know start peeling your skin will start peeling um, so I would actually skip the retinol from in the morning and I would use my growth factor um, <clears throat> moisturizer and SPF and an eye cream. That's all I use in the morning and that's what I actually recommend my patients to do as well. And then at night um, I would do the retinol like Sarah said earlier, wait a few minutes and then put on your growth factor um, and night cream as well. And I think some of the evidence you know with, with tolerating um, uh, retinols, the growth factors believe it or not can help patients tolerate mm -hmm. retinols better. Uh, because the, what happens with the growth factors is they stimulate sebum and with the sebum you're going to get a little bit faster recovery from the retinols. So a lot of times uh, one easy way to remember is to start with what with the clean face is put your most potent product first um, and so sometimes I, I kind of go back and forth with retinols and growth factor which one to put on first um, but I think they both have um, some merit and I think generally speaking you're going to put go start from thin to thick and thick generally speaking is going to be a moisturizer. So you're going to put your active ingredient first, then from your active ingredient you're going to work your way towards um, sort of the protective elements and that leads us to moisturizers which if you're wearing that at night is going to go on layered after your retinol and after your growth factors. Um, any other tips and pointers about uh, retinols? Um, I think we covered it all. Just keep using it. Um, it once you start, like Renee said, when you start to see yourself healing Itchy, it's actually a good clinical endpoint. Like you want your skin to look that way. 
you just have to you know go through that process and i promise you if you get through that hump of the itchy peeling skin you'll be really happy in the long term but another thing to always keep in mind though also with using retinol any kind of retinol products um you do want to um be like be aware um of the sun um of tanning um of hair removal of any kind of uh, um peels or anything like that, you definitely want to stay off of it for about a week um, and make sure you let your esthetician know or your doctor mm -hmm. that you are on a retinol. So do you have a, um, you know, so if someone's coming to you for, for a peel or a laser procedure, um, what's your stance on retinol? Do you want them on it? Do you want them off it? I definitely want your them timeline? off of it and I want them off of it for at least a week um, only because the face is um, a lot more sensitive um, because it's doing its job. Um, you know, of cause, you know, collagen stimulation, and um, it does cause sensitivity to the skin. So you're you, you don't want to do any kind of laser hair or any kind of um, or even waxing or anything like that to the face. And, and for for it's only on the face you're talking about laser hair, not anywhere else in the body. Oh, just on, I'm sorry, yeah, just on the face. Um, but yeah, you don't want to do any kind of chemical peels or anything like that when you're on a retinol. So you definitely want to stay off of it for at least a week. And Sarah, do you have any requirements for patients uh, prior to procedures? Similar to Same thing, yeah, that's what we learned. Definitely want to be off all week. And, 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 I, and I would agree with that. I think the issue with uh, you know with lasers and chemical pills, the reason you know the science are kind of behind why we want to be off of retinols is basically because what's going to happen is you're going to have less production of sebum, less production of oil, and with less production of oil your body is not going to recover fast enough from a laser, so you're going to have a longer recovery period. Um, another question with retinols that kind of comes up is patients who are pregnant, Renine right now is, uh, how many weeks pregnant are you right now? I am 20, 25 weeks. So um, a common question is, I'm pregnant, I love how my skin feels, can I use a retinol when I'm pregnant, Renine? Unfortunately, you cannot. Um, you definitely want to stay away from um, any kind of retinol products, any moisturizers with retinol in it, any kind of, you, that's a big no. So unfortunately, we cannot use that. <laughs> and, and again, the science behind this is basic, it's, it's from the oral form of retinol, basically, which is a vitamin A derivative, and um, you know, the trade name of this is Accutane. And when patients who took Accutane uh, took it during pregnancy, there was a lot of birth defects. Mm -hmm. Now, there's never been a known reported birth defect with the use of a retinol or um, a Retin-A during pregnancy. However, you know, based on the science, I don't think anyone has taken any chances, particularly during pregnancy. Renee, you're going to agree with that, obviously, Correct. being pregnant. So a lot of my um, products with vitamin A or any, you know, um, I definitely just stay away from. I don't even touch. So when I'm using it on my, even when I'm using it on my patients, I'm definitely making sure my hands are gloved and um, protected. All right, so that, that concludes our, our talk about retinol. Um, yeah, join us for more exciting uh, uh, podcasts and YouTube videos.